buy the bad apple for giving my students crabs? Is that what I think it is? Hi guys, my voice is almost back to where it should be. It might sound normal on camera, but I can like feel it straining. It's also the first official cold day of the year. At least where I live. I had to break out my sweatshirt. Look, I reverse tie dyed it or like bleach dyed it, tie dyed it, but however you call that. Maybe one day I'll teach you guys how to do it. But not today because it's Tuesday, meaning it's time for a weekly episode of Am I the Bad Apple? As always, if you're looking for life advice from this channel and you want to submit your story for an Am I the Bad Apple episode, you can do so at my subreddit r slash am I the bad apple. I say that, but people still send them to Instagram and email. Please just send them to the subreddit. I'm begging you. So without further ado, let's get started with this week's episode of Am I the Bad Apple? Let's go apple picking. I know I forgot last week. I'm so sorry. I love you. Apple number one. Am I the bad apple for not complying with our school rules? I moved from Pennsylvania to Texas in January of 2018. There's so much culture shock, it was really overwhelming. Since then, I love it here, but it hasn't always been smooth sailing. My first summer, I changed schools again and had some difference of opinions. Unlike Pennsylvania, Texas says the Pledge of Allegiance for the US as well as the pledge to the Texas flag. We did nothing like that in Pennsylvania or any other state I've lived in. This was such a new and weird thing. I didn't want to do it. I went as far as to just sit down for it. But my other classmates didn't like when I did that. They said it disrespected their history and maybe they were right. I don't know. My teacher, regardless of her actual feelings towards my actions, told them they couldn't force me to do it. She also told me I was free to do what I wanted, but it could cause some backlash. And she was right. I was eventually called down to the principal's office to have a conversation about, apparently was against some school rule and I needed to start reciting the pledge. I politely said, I'm not gonna do that. And he was firm that it was against the rules to not say the pledge to the Texas flag. I then said, look, I have freedom of speech and I'm still not gonna do it. And if you still insist that I have to, I'm gonna consult an attorney. After I threatened with a lawsuit, he told me to have a great day and go back to class. I felt really good and it felt like I was in the right, but I've always wondered if I went about the situation all wrong or maybe I should have just complied. I guess it is a really part of Texas history and now I absolutely love it here. I enjoy living in Texas. So what do you think? Was I the bad apple? Did I do the right thing? Your principal lied to you, 100% lied to you. And I'm hoping that he lied to you because if he didn't, he's doing something illegal. At least I think it's illegal. Because you can't force people to say the pledge. You're exactly right, freedom of speech. You can say the pledge or you cannot say the pledge. Either way, you have the freedom to do either. And I find it very interesting that all the other kids are also super upset about it. It's just not that way here where I live. I'm in North Carolina for those of you that don't know. And now when I taught high school, I always told kids, you know, hey, you can stand, you can sit, you can say it, you can not say it. And I would appreciate it if the room could be quiet because it's also when they do the regular announcements and I want to be able to hear what they're saying. Um, so just don't be absolutely wild if you're gonna chat with a friend because you're not saying it at least do it so quietly and whisper so that those who do want to say the pledge can and those who do want to hear the announcements can kind of thing you know be respectful of what each other is trying to do and don't give each other crap if they're not saying it don't give each other crap if they are saying it. it's kind of your choice i've never actually seen kids get upset if someone's not saying it and just to be clear so no one gets the wrong idea, I do support the troops, I have family members that are in the military, but I also know plenty of soldiers that don't stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I worked with a soldier who does not stand for the Pledge of Allegiance or the National Anthem. It's a personal choice and not one that I think anyone else gets an opinion on of what someone chooses to do. Schools cannot force you to say the pledge. Let's ask Avery. Hey Avery! According to West Virginia Board of Education, Bruce Barnett, Supreme Court decision in 1943, public school students may not be compelled to recite any pledge of allegiance or pledge to an individual state flag. There you go. Look at our friendly neighborhood attorney. He's so handy. So if I didn't say it already, I think 
think she's a good apple. I think that she was very smart. I really like how she was a young girl who felt comfortable standing up for herself and what she believed in. I think that's great. I love that. I love seeing that. And shame on that principal. He knew he was in the wrong. Apple number two. Am I the bad apple for telling my ex's new girlfriend not to discipline my child? I, 36 female, have a child Aaliyah, 6 female, with my ex Jacob, 33 male. He has this new girlfriend Regina, 22 female. We just finalized a court order he requested after meeting her and currently have complete 50-50 custody. Regina's always been a little too involved and genuinely believes that since she trains parents to parent, she knows everything. Every time I ask Jacob for help with Aaliyah, he comes with suggestions from Regina instead of workshopping things between the two of us. She's been overstepping for years. Jacob and I pretty much parallel parent now and do everything separate, including birthdays and even parent-teacher conferences. And yes, he brings Regina to those too. Regina picks Aaliyah up from school every day because I don't get off work in time and Jacob didn't want to pay for after school program since he doesn't need it. So of course he jumps at the opportunity to involve Regina. I'm currently trying to find a car because I lost mine. So Regina ends up bringing Aaliyah to my house instead of our meeting point. When she showed up with my daughter the other day, Aaliyah was really quiet and looked sad. When I asked her what was wrong, she wouldn't tell me, so I confronted Regina at her car. Regina said she took away Aaliyah's tablet and TV time because she refused to do her homework and kept her home from cheerleading practice until it was done and she missed it. Aaliyah loves cheer and this was just cruel to me. It's something she and Regina connected over and Regina got her into this sport and now she just uses it as a tool to control her? To rip it away when she feels like it? She's six years old and that's not her place. I've told Regina before, she's not allowed to discipline my child. She argued with me and said that if Aaliyah's gonna be in her care, she's gonna have to discipline her and since she doesn't yell or hit, she doesn't understand the problem. I told her she's not a mom and she shouldn't be acting like one. She looked me in the eye and said, this is why Aaliyah has behavior issues in your care. And she just left. I called Jacob immediately and demanded that Aaliyah be put in an after school program and he refused to pay for it. He said I was being ridiculous, but the parenting plan says no cruel punishments and that only parents should lead most discipline. If he's doing what she says all the time, how is he leading? Now Regina's refusing to bring Aaliyah to my doorstep and I have to now Uber to the meeting point, which is costing me lots of money. Is this something that I could or should take them back to court about? Am I the bad apple? Tea break, that was a long and aggressive story to read. I need to find more soup mugs that are more than just black. Like I want a fun soup mug. Do you need to know where I can get one? Okay, first of all, this mom is like, my ex's new girlfriend, but she's acting like she's been there for a couple weeks and is making major parenting decisions. She said years, plural. The kid's only six. Even if it's only been two years, cause that's the minimum amount for plural years, that's still what a third of the kid's life? That's not a new girlfriend, mom. That's potentially a future stepmom. And while I don't think this lady has any business telling you how to parent or what you should do on your time, if you really are parallel parenting and doing everything separate, what's wrong with Jacob asking her for an opinion? Like if she's a trained professional, if this is what she does for a career, I don't understand the problem. The only problem you have is that it's his girlfriend. If she was just a random professional he was calling and paying for whatever for, you would have no problem. You just don't like it because it's a girlfriend. Now the next issue that I have, you want the dad to pay for after school care, but he doesn't need after school care because he has someone that can go pick up your daughter. You only want him to pay for it so that you can use it. That's not his job. If he has someone that can go and get Aaliyah and not pay for the after school care, why wouldn't he use it? You're using it too. You could pay for after school care or you could have a family member or a friend go get her, but you're choosing to use Regina for free. She doesn't have to do that for you, but she does. And you don't have a car, so she's doing you a favor and bringing her to your house instead of a meeting point. She doesn't have to do that, but she's doing it 
as a favor to you. And that's all like the background information, right? That's not even the main problem at hand. The main problem at hand is that Regina was watching your daughter. Apparently she not only picks her up for after school care for you, but keeps her for a couple hours for you and then brings her to your house for you, right? So while she's babysitting your child for free, not during her boyfriend's time, during your time, she says, do your homework, Aaliyah. And Aaliyah says, no, I don't want to. And she says, okay, then no screen time until you get it done. That seems pretty reasonable to me. Y'all know I don't have kids. I don't have the issue of parenting or co-parenting or any of that things, but that seems very reasonable to me. Like if I were to go and babysit kids, I might do that. That makes sense to me. If these kids knew that they could get away with anything under the supervision of a babysitter or dad's girlfriend or anybody, they would purposefully do whatever they wanted. Like that's dangerous. You can't tell them, oh yeah, you can do whatever you want and this person can't discipline you in any way, shape or form. No consequences. That doesn't make sense. If she refuses to do her homework because she's playing on her tablet, then yeah, taking away the tablet makes sense. Now I will admit, I don't like them making her skip practice. I was a cheerleader for 15 years, okay? When one person doesn't show up to practice, that kind of ruins it for everybody. That's an entire stunt group that can't go. That's an entire formation that's up. It just, it messes everybody up. I, I'm not for that kind of punishment. I think that's selfish and irresponsible. I think that's not fair to the team. I think that if you were to do something like basketball or, you know, something where the team's not relying in that way for that one practice, you know, that, that's a little bit different when it's not a formation kind of thing with stunts and you need every single person to do their part or it's not going to work. That just wastes everybody's time. I do think taking away screen time was reasonable. I don't think missing practice was reasonable. And I think that when it came to the, oh, she doesn't want to do her homework, that can be an issue given to the parents later on. But at the same time, you have no idea if Regina called Jacob and asked him what to do or not. You have no idea if Jacob gave her those instructions or not. You don't. It didn't look like you asked. It looked like what you did was call Jacob and said, I don't want her doing this anymore. I don't want her picking the kids up. You're gonna have to pay for the after school care that only I need. And then you got mad when Regina would no longer do you the favor of taking her to your house. She took her to the meeting point that you guys originally agreed on. Oh, well she's costing me a bunch of money. Well, she's just not doing you a favor anymore. If you don't have a car, how else were you gonna go get her anyways? If she was staying in the after school care, how were you going to go get her? Would you expect Regina to still go pick her up from that too? I'm just not understanding how it's Regina's fault that you have to Uber to go get your kid when you don't want her picking her up anyways. Would you not still have to do that? That doesn't make sense to me. I feel like this mom is not over Jacob. I feel like she's very jealous of Regina. I feel like she just doesn't want Regina around. That's the vibes that I'm getting. What do you guys think? Do you agree with me? Do you think she's being more reasonable than I think she's being? Do you not agree about the practice thing? Because I'm very passionate about that. I, I thought that was a poor move on Regina's part. And that's why I'm going to give maybe a bad batch. I feel kind of bad because I don't know if it was Regina's call or Jacob's call, but regardless, I don't like that they made that call to not let her go to practice. But I also think mom is being really unreasonable. And that's just my opinion from the outside looking in. Again, I don't have kids. I don't co-parent. I have cats who my husband and I love very much. I don't know what it's like. So maybe there's something that I'm missing. And if there is, tell me. Let me know what it is. I just don't understand because I've never been in this situation before. So let me know. I'm really excited to see what you guys have to say. Apple number three. Am I the bad apple for making my parents homeless? I, 27 female, lived with my parents until last week. I have a dog that I love. and She's been my best friend since I graduated university. I'm not very social and I prefer her company to most people that I know. I've had boyfriends and even short relationships that ended amicably. I'm just not really interested in much beyond my work and my dog. My parents think that's a shortcoming, but I don't. My little brother also lives with us and he's in high school and doesn't pay rent. I pay about 50% of everything in the house, including groceries. It 
it's about the same as rent would cost me and I get the basement suite. It's not a legal suite in the sense that it could be rented, but it's fine for a family member. It was just because of building codes and stuff. It would cost it a lot of money to make it suitable for a renter. But anyways, back to the story. One day my mom decided that the reason I'm not actively looking for a husband is because my dog takes too much of my attention. My pup does have some health problems, but it's nothing I can't afford and nothing that affects her quality of life. But my mom still decided to give her away just while I was at work. I came home and she was gone along with all of her stuff, her toys, her leash, everything. I lost it on my mom. I told her that if she didn't tell me where my dog was, I was calling the cops and saying that they stole my dogs and wanted to have them charged. I immediately went to the place that my dog was and got her back, of course. I then went back to my parents' house, packed all my stuff that was important to me, and went to a friend's house. My dad's been calling and texting asking about money for October, and I told him he should have thought about that before he allowed that crazy person to steal from me. Since my dad lost his job due to COVID, they can't afford all the household bills without my help. And my dad says they'll be out of all of their money in three months without me and my help. But I don't trust them anymore. My family thinks I'm a jerk for caring more about my dog than I do them, but they stole my dog and just gave her away. I don't think there's any way for me to ever live with them again. So am I the bad apple? Are you kidding me? Hold on, hold on. Do you see this? This is the most important thing in my whole life. And I've said this before in this video series. This is my world. If I ever came home learning that he or his sister, I love Vixie very much as well, but Milo chose me to be his human and Vixie chose my husband. She chose wrong, we don't fault her for it very much, but if I were to come home and learn that either of them were just given away because someone thought that we loved them too much, if my mom thought that I wasn't having children because we loved our cats too much and just gave them away when we were out of town, heads would roll. Absolutely not. I'm gonna tell you right now, and people are going to disagree with me, and that's okay and I don't care. Your pets are your family. And if you don't agree, don't get a pet. That mom is wacko. Absolutely not. I wouldn't be able to stay there either. I wouldn't be able to trust if I went to work, she wouldn't do it again. No, that girl's a good apple. That mom is lucky that you are so much nicer than me. My anxiety is up. I just feel like I have to go hug my cats now. Apple number four. Am I the bad apple for giving my students crabs? What? I, 28 female, teach at a lower income school here in the States. In the six-ish years I've been teaching, I've always had animals in my classroom. I think it's really important, especially for students who can't have pets of their own. This year for the animal biology lesson, in addition to having our pet turtle, I decided to invest in hermit crabs. Oh. Prior to the month-long unit, I had kids do reports on animals and used hermit crabs as examples. Then, as the unit was introduced, I revealed the crabs and the kids were so excited. They took turns taking care of them, learned all about them, named them, and all the fun things. After the unit finished, I decided I'd pick three students to take crabs home. Of course, they filled out forms, they got permissions from their guardians, and the grown-ups had to come to me to get the crabs, all cleared by admin, of course. I just wanted to make sure the parents understood what they were signing up for. Everything went fine. I chose my more responsible students, I spoke with the guardians, I did all the things I was supposed to. But a week later, one of the students told me something sad happened. Her crab died. I sent her to the guidance counselor to walk her through the grief process and reached out to her mom to see how I could support her. Well, you know what? According to mom, I'm a total jerk for giving her daughter the pet to begin with. She's been crying nonstop and is devastated beyond belief. Apparently, according to mom, it wasn't my place to give her daughter a pet and I crossed so many lines. She then complained to admin about me and I had to have a meeting with the principal who told me it was a bad idea. Crabs are fragile and apparently I knowingly inflicted grief on a child and hurt an animal in the process. I just wanted to make the unit fun and teach responsibility as well as social emotional skills. So was I the bad apple? No. 
That's a pretty normal lesson. I had my teacher do something so similar. We did centipedes and crabs, not the hermit crabs. I think they're are fiddler crabs. And then what else do we have? Frogs maybe? I can't remember. We got to take those home too and I also died. <laughs> I was in fifth grade, I tried really hard to take care of it, but I must have loved it too much. From my perspective, that's a pretty normal lesson because my teachers did the exact same thing. Here's my biggest problem, and this is a great illustration of education right now. You ran this by your principal and administration, and they're like, yeah, go ahead, great job, you go for it. You then talked to the parents, got permissions, sent them home with information, let them know what they were getting into, made sure they were okay with it, and the moment something went wrong for one person, everyone's like, Oh, you did such a terrible job. You're such a bad teacher. How could you do this? Everyone was originally cheering you on and the moment something went awry, it's all your fault. Admin's like, I don't know why you did that. That's such a bad idea. Even though they told you it was fine. The mom volunteered for this. She's the one that's like, yeah, I'll sign the form. I will come get the crab. Great idea. Kid will love this. And then said you crossed lines even though she's the one that gave the go ahead. All you did was offer an opportunity. She accepted it. I'm so frustrated for you. I don't know what grade you teach, but I'm assuming into elementary school. And death is a normal thing that people in the world experience. I think it's fabulous that the moment you heard what happened, you sent her to the counselor to learn more about the grief process. That sounds so healthy to me. And again, I know there's gonna be people who don't agree with me on that. There's gonna be people that insist that she's too young. Well, what about all the kids that experience the death of family members when they're that young? I don't think it's a terrible thing to learn about a grief process and how to deal with that kind of thing in elementary school. It happens sometimes. You can't stop that. And I don't think it's a terrible thing that when the situation arises that you are pointed in the direction of how to help yourself and how to move forward. It was a very unfortunate situation but I think an important one. Not that I'm really excited that this poor little girl had to experience this kind of grief and loss over her crab that she clearly loved very much. But I do think it's a positive that the first time she encountered this kind of situation, she was given the proper steps and the proper help to really grieve and process it. Not a lot of kids get that. Either people assume all oh, they're young, they'll never remember all this stuff happening, or the kids will get sheltered from death and illness and things like that up until they're older and then all of a sudden the real world hits them and family members pass or friends or pets, you know, life happens and then they're teenagers or young adults not really sure how to deal with this kind of grief because it's not something that they ever learned before. So I don't think the teacher's the bad apple at all. And if the mom was just upset in general, I wouldn't think she's the bad apple, but the fact that she's blaming the teacher for it, that makes the mom the bad apple. And the fact that the admin approved this whole thing and then afterwards when a parent was upset, they're like, oh, this was a bad idea. Bad apple admin, oh, awful. Teacher, you got this. You're doing a good job. Okay, so I have an idea. And I wanted to start it this week, but just with the traveling and the recovering. I've been thinking of acting out the Bad Apple stories, like film me acting them out and then showing the footage of me being silly while I'm reading it. I don't know. My concern is, you know, I like to read the stories from the people's perspective. You know, they wholeheartedly believe in everything they're writing and I want to convey that. And I'm concerned that if I these stories out in a silly way like I don't want it to sway what you guys think I don't know I got a fake mustache and I got a little kid hat and I got little bitty costumes do you think this is a good idea do you think it's a bad idea let me know <laughs> if you think it's gonna be really good then I'll do it next for next week for sure and it's getting close to Halloween so you have to let me know what you want me to dress up as in a couple weeks thank you guys for hanging out with me today you're all so wonderful I hope if you're someone that's going for a promotion or a raise I hope you get it because you deserve it I had so much fun with you guys today make sure to like share and subscribe if you have not already we're getting really close to 2 million and I think I'm gonna give out some prizes once we hit it and I'll see you guys next week bye my lovelies Mwah.